Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen if you recall in the last lecture we had started discussing the communication model uh the re topic was basically communication and if you recall uh with the same context that we had been discussing attitudes the formation of attitudes and how we influence attitudes and we also recognized the importance uh of attitude formation because we suggested that if we have a positive attitude then logic says that the person will be more inclined to the action of buying because that is what we are talking about it's basically the aspect of marketing that we would like to promote our product to the person and the end result of that promotion should be purchase now obviously attitude is a very relevant part of it we will ignore the concept of what happens inside the person when the attitudes are formed but we would see how the marketers try to impact that uh the attitude by influencing it and one major area which is i think the whole crux of this lecture uh, or the series of lectures is to focus on this communication format or communicating messages or using communication to position the product in the market which relates to stp so we will be taking a deeper look into the process as well as to start with the model now if you go back and look at the model you will see that there is somebody who is the initiator or the source of message or a person who sends the message and i will not say person but whoever sends the message is the initiator or source and obviously this message must reach somebody and again that receiver is or could be any form so we will look at this aspect also the kind of receiver that we are looking at and obviously the message has to flow through a channel or a medium as we call and as the medium is used it is actually transferring some information some message some idea some image to the receiver and whatever this which is being sent we call the message part the final part of the model is the closing loop which is once the message has been received by the receiver then there has to be some kind of a reaction this reaction is what we call the feedback loop now there is a very significant factor about the feedback like i told you last time also that this aspect of feedback we generally try and ignore uh, people believe that once i have given a message the job is done and the person is not ready to listen to the audience or the target as to what they are saying uh, this aspect particularly in marketing is very very critical because our goal is not purely like in a class framework that i am giving a lecture and i am believing that the message that i am giving is being received by the people and therefore if i was to get a feedback that my message may not be as clear as it should be then logically my message delivery will improve this part of improving the message results from the feedback system and if you recall uh, in all the universities and organizations where uh, teaching knowledge passing communication takes place there is always this tendency to receive feedback but in marketing and in our day to day affairs of the marketing we normally tend to ignore this so we must remember that we have to keep watching or keep receiving feedback so that we can improve change maybe adjust the message to fit with with our requirements now let's go back a little and start from the first framework obviously i will be discussing this in detail but to briefly put all these points into position let's look at the source or sender now what we need to understand is that sender could be somebody at the back of the source actually uh, for example there is a company which is going to be uh, sending a communication message but the person or the company is going to use either or maybe a, a model 
or a spokesperson or somebody. So now we have to distinguish between two, these two factors. One is the original initiator of the message and the second is the deliverer of the message. So we have to be very careful in trying to differentiate between that because sometimes the companies normally use uh, a spokesperson, uh, maybe the informal channel or the formal channel. Now, the formal channel and informal channel we have to distinguish again, which is very uh, important in marketing because formal channels are all those channels which can be recognized and related to or identified with the original initiator or that is the company. Now, the company can be profit, non-profit, uh, can be a government uh, organization, whoever, but they can use two frames of sending a message. One is very formalized framework, which is something you can understand by the point of uh, the, the uh, advertising or broadcast or whatever. On the other side, you also see informal source of message also. Now, in this point, when the informal source is coming in, there is no direct link with the organization and the spokesperson or the person who is communicating this uh, message. Uh, let's look at it. Informal could be your friends who are passing a message, but unintentionally, they are representing the original uh, organization. Uh, it could also be, for example, uh, some kind of a communication like consumer report or some kind of an article written in the newspaper, the, maybe, uh, what do you call this, uh, your family people who might be talking to you about the product. So informal are where we cannot directly recognize or associate that this message is actually being generated from the initiator. And I told you the initiator is the company or organization which wants to communicate. But this informal, uh, we call it word of mouth, becomes very, very critical. Why? And we will see that as we go into the process of communication and we try to understand the significance of a formal communication and an informal communication and their impact and their believability or let's say their credibility of the message uh, within the two contexts. Uh, okay, now once we have understood what kind of sources we can have, like I said, word of mouth could be a source, a formal advertisement could be a source, a formal broadcast could be a source, but then iska koi receiver hoga. Iska jo receiver hai, that is again a very significant factor. Who will receive this message? In the first instant, yani ke shuru mein, to as a marketer, hamara ek target hai, jisko hum message dena chate hai, so we can understand that, okay, the customer, the prospective customer or the proposed customer is the person to whom we want to communicate our message. But when we are looking at our customers or the target market, we should not ignore the fact, uh, which sometimes is ignored, that there are some unintended viewers also or listeners also or receivers also, and these unintended are also significant. Because when we message, we have targeted towards exactly the kind of uh, a target that we are looking for in terms of a customer. But are we aware that this message may also be seen by the retail shop owner or the wholesaler or the distributor? Because this message we are giving the customer, its impact will come to people. So we have to see that the synergistic effect of this message will be the other people in the channel. So we should not be just looking at the customer alone. We should also look at the unintended. Yani ke jin ki taraf humne actually usko target nahi kiya, lekin wo phir bhi receive kar rahe. We should also keep in mind ke un pe kya impression aayega. Ab isme, like I said, it could be the retailers, the wholesalers, or other people who are at this point of time currently not the customers of the company or the brand or the product. But it could be possible that this company organization launches another product within its own brand area, which might have an impact or which might be related to the people who are at this point not really concerned. For example, if I am advertising for Sony camera, then at this point of time, I am only advertising to people 
who are taking photographs. But this ad could also be seen by people who are not buying or interested in what you call a camera, but subsequently maybe if the company like Sony wants to launch uh, a television set, then these people who are now watching the camera, uh, you know, the advertisement for the camera could be influenced. So when we are doing this, we need to be very careful as to who the receiver could be. Now, obviously, uh, we were discussing the third factor is the kind of channel that we have or the medium through which we can send the message. Very briefly, a medium could be like impersonal. When I say impersonal, that means it is totally without any consideration of interaction between the sender and the receiver. So it is considered to be totally impersonal. It's not interpersonal. It is totally impersonal where uh, there is no interaction. And some of the kind of medias that we use is like the mass media advertisement systems. Uh, billboard, that's kind of an impersonal advertising. Uh, you have, you buy a space on the newspaper and you get that. That is again an impersonal message that is being given. Obviously, the attempt would always be to make it more personalized, but it is still not personal because there is no uh, back and forth uh, talk about it. So we can't call it kind of interpersonal. And obviously, if you're talking about channels, then we also have to look at the interpersonal channel, uh, which means where two people can sit across each other and have a discussion. And that discussion could also lead a message to go through. And like I said, it becomes very important because in interpersonal, feedback is very urgent and very we can get the feedback very quickly, which is very important in terms of the feedback system. And I've been talking about that feedback, particularly in the area of interpersonal, is critical as well as that is why most of the time we also try and make sure that the feedback can be quickly received. And currently, nowadays, one of the major um, areas of usage of medium is what we have as websites, the e-commerce systems, where the people make the web page so interactive that we can actually quickly receive the feedback and the, the medium is becoming more virtual kind of a thing. And that kind of a, a, a medium is now taking precedence over the mass media system by which only advertising is done at a particular level. But again, remember that this will always depend upon the objective of the organization and the kind of product that is being marketed and so on and so forth. Now, let's take the fourth part of this model, which is basically the message itself. Now, message is a very complicated thing. It may not be only verbal uh, because most of the point of time people believe that a message or a memo written is the only way you communicate, but that's not true. There are so many other non-verbal ways of passing a message. For example, you would have seen among people when people are meeting, and I had also given you an idea when we were discussing this issue of the two people are talking together and somebody walks in, uh, comes close to them, they're having a confidential talk, so the person will just walk away when he, they walk away, would give a message to this person that it's not acceptable. So we find that there is a constant requirement of a, a, a message which is going through, and it is basically uh, kind of a non-verbal. Non-verbal is not basically only the, the, this kind of a, uh, attitude or this kind of a sign system, but it could also be a symbol. For example, some banks Ingersoll, for example, has a lion on it. Now, that lion is actually giving a message too. It is also a message. Uh, sometimes uh, companies are shown with uh, a symbol of a strong pillar, which also indicates a message again. The only thing is that we have to make sure that whatever message we are sending as marketers should be interpreted or reverted back to uh, the message received in exactly the same form. And agar aapko yaad ho, there is this um, very, in, I mean, youngsters and normally in parties, games are played where 
uh, people sit in a, in a circle and one person whispers a lengthy message to the person uh, sitting next to him and that person tries to communicate this message to the third person and this message travels across and at the end they try and see how truly representative is the end receipt of that message because it is possible that as it passes through the things change in the message and when it is finally received by the last person the message has undergone change the same logic which i've just described is happening while messages taking place a lot of noise is taking place a lot of personal uh, characteristics are playing games uh, my emotional state is into position when i'm trying to interpret so therefore when we send a message, it has to be very, very significant in terms of making sure or ensuring that when it is decoded, when it is uh, received and interpreted, then it is exactly what we intended in the beginning. Now, to be able to make sure that mistakes don't play, uh, take place between this message sending and receiving of the message, the importance of the feedback comes into position. And it is here that what we say as far as interpersonal messaging is concerned or the use of medium is concerned, we can quickly adjust our message knowing that where is this misconception coming in. But it becomes more difficult when we have mass media sort of a thing where we are advertising, we have bought a space on a paper, we give our advertisement. Then getting the feedback is a very distinct exercise that companies must do to ensure that they do not make a mistake. Now, we have discussed the model. Let's start the discussion of the process. Now, before we go into the details of the process, let's first determine okay, what is the aim of our communication. From the marketer's point of view, whether it is profit organization or non-profit organization, all products are marketed, which include services and products themselves. So the pehla goal communication ka is to make the market aware of the availability or presence of the product or service, whatever it is. So the first aim is to try and make the people aware. So the first factor is create awareness. However, it does not end there. The second aim or goal of the process of communication is to try and induce the market. Induce means unko kisi tarah se incline kiya jaye to buy the product or at least try the product. So buying the product or trying the product again is one of the goals of the marketer who is trying to communicate. Thirdly, it can also relate to getting some kind of commitment. Now here it may not be a product or whatever it is. For example, in the case of a non-profit organization, I might be induced to make a commitment that I will always give zakat to a particular non-profit NGO. Uh, if I was to do that, I would have certain reasons. But again, the message from the NGO or the non-profit organization must be such that I am induced to do that. Fourthly, we have already discussed that it is possible to bring change in attitude. So one of the major goals of uh, any communication can also be to change attitudes. And I already told you that normally if there is a negative attitude, we try and bring it to neutral and then take it to positive. If it is a neutral attitude, we as marketers tend to use communication to bring to the positive side of the picture. Sometimes we also give symbolic meaning to a product. For example, if we are, the goal is, let's say we change the price. We raise the price very high. Now, even this price raise, is a message. Uh, it's a kind of message which is suggesting something about the product. If you raise the price to a certain level, it could also be symbolically mean that this product is of a very high quality. So sometimes messages could also lead to some kind of a symbolic association with the product or service. Finally, the goal can be that the company or the message giver or the message communicates that this product or service can actually support or solve your problem better than 
any other competitive product that is available in the market. Now, let's look at from the very beginning, the concept and the model that we talked about the initiator or the source or the sender and look at various process aspects of his area. Now, obviously, I've already told you just to recapitulate the aim of the source or the sender is to either inform, influence or persuade the market or the receiver. Now, what are the decisions that the person or the initiator has to take when he is going to go through this process? So the first thing he has to decide is who will be the target market? Who will be the target of this communication? Ye message kis ke liye hai? Dusra decision jo unhone lena hai, that is, kya kaha jai? What will be the message? What should be said? Now, what actions does he have to take? The actions are that he has to encode. Encode ka matlab hai, wo message ko kisi tarah se tiyar aisa karega ke jo message ko exactly usi tarah se communicate ho aur receiver ko bilkul usi tarah pohunche jaisa wo chaata hai. Now, that would be the action that is required, that is to encode the message in such a manner that when the receiver receives it and interprets it or decodes the message, he will have exactly the message that the person who initiated send it. Now, how would be they doing it? Now, how would they do it is by first developing the message and then using some media to transmit it. Now, what are the locations of this development and transmission? Transmission, for example, ki ye ek department ya ek organization mein kaun si jaga pe develop honge aur kis jaga se ye transmit kiya jayenge? To we know that in organizations, it could be the marketing department or it could be a person also. And this person is like the spokesperson. Now, spokesperson also tries to communicate or give a messages regarding the company or its products in various forums. So we have that it can be done through a department or an individual. Now, how would he encode this message? Encode means that message which is in his mind, how do So whatever is in your mind, you cannot write it down in a lengthy document, but you try to use certain words, certain symbols, certain pictures to actually try and communicate. Now, war kije yahan that it is very important to be, to understand very correctly ke jo symbol hum istamal kar rahe hain ya jo word istamal kar rahe hain ya jo picture istamal kar rahe hain uska jo matlab hai wo bhi exactly jo aap project karna cha rahe hain wohi wo receive kar raha. Agar wo nahi hua aur aapka jo symbol hai ya aapne jo picture di hai wo unke zhen mein koi aur uski kya naam hai shape banti hai ya uska koi aur interpretation aata hai to ye confusion create karega aur ye communication jo hai galat ho jati hai now ab encoding bhi ho gaya ab hum ye kaise karenge how do we now actually put it into position either of the two things will happen we will either buy space in a newspaper or we will buy time either on a radio or on a television and we will use some kind of a selected method or media to pass this message on or broadcast or advertise or carry out publicity. Now, be very careful to understand the difference between the concept of advertisement and publicity. The important difference between the two is that advertisement jo hai, wo source ko recognize karta hai. Uh, for example, if you see an ad in the newspaper, you'll always find a small footnote which shows ke ye kis advertising company ki taraf se ad diya gaya hai, which also suggests that this advertisement is paid for. Or among the people, the concept is that any advertisement that is given by the company through an advertising agency is always meant to benefit the company. Watch this difference, huh? Ke they actually believe, every person believes that when the ad is given, it is company ke fayde ke liye hai. But publicity, on the other hand, cannot be really identified with the original firm. For example, consumer report. If you go to television, pe, 
and you want to buy, let's say, um, a number of, you want to buy a camera or a car, you can go to a consumer report which actually lists down all the models of the cars and their assessments and everything. So it is likely that one of the companies who is trying to advertise its higher uh, quality can also be re reflected in that publicity document, but nobody can say that this publicity document has been made, its sole purpose, which is the number one car in it, is the advertisement. It is not uh, assumed that way. And that's why we say that the impact of the publicity on the consumer is on the publicity ka jo impact hai on the consumer or the target market or general public is more significant than an advertisement which people know. The reason is, if you recall, uh, when we were discussing attitude formation and attitude change, to ek swal, the consumer normally asks, Ke, why is this person trying to suggest this thing to me? And obviously, agar uske is area mein ye jawab ho, ke isme iska fayda hai, to obviously, the person will not be inclined to believe or give credit to the a message that there is a truth in it. So publicity is a very major concept hai, which we will be discussing as we go along. Now, what we are actually discussing is this, in the, at this point of time, the question of credibility. That a receiver knows how much the message is known. And we should be aware that this credibility hai, ye, this affects the decoding of the information. We have given the message and we have assumed that everything is very correct that we had said. But the decode is that if there is an credibility issue, then this is not going to be done. If it is not going to be naturally, the communication is that is failing. And we need to be very clear as to how we can manage this. Now, credibility ke upar jo impact aata hai, that comes from the perceived. I'm telling you, it, the word is perceived. Not whether the person is honest or not honest, not that the company is dishonest or not honest. It is the perception of the consumer whether this person is being honest and objective. Now, the impact on the receiver obviously relates to how much respect the sender or the person who is the spokesperson or the source, he commands in the target market. Uh, if he commands a lot of respect, it is obvious that the message will be more believable. But if the person is not, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, considered to be reliable or considered to be honest or does not have that kind of respect, then the, 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 the message will be that much less believable. Uh, and that for, therefore, we should understand that the spokesperson or the source, which normally we use in the advertisements in the media, like television, like uh, uh, what do you call the commercials, the model becomes important. And I'll give you an example here, what happened to one of the products, because the research suggested that the model was not believed. And the reason was very simple. The ad was about ghee or oil, cooking oil. And the model that who was used was very young and everybody knew because the person was an actress in the movies. So everybody knew that she is not married and she does not have children. But in the ad, the children were shown to be between nine and 12 years. Now, and the person was trying to promote uh, the, the oil as a mother, a caring mother for the health of the family and her children. Now, there was this problem of uh, the credibility of the individual because more or less everybody knew that the person uh, does not have children, the person is not married. So how could she be coming on the, uh, as, a, as a spokesperson for the, uh, the company and suggest that this oil is for health of the children or her children, whatever it was. So the problem was that there was a disconnect between the model and the product. That becomes very, very important. 
Similarly, the concept of perceived gains. Now, if I'm trying to convince somebody to buy this product and the person knows that I will be getting commission out of this, then my message will be discounted. Yani ke uski jo itbar, uski jo itbari hai, uspe shak paida ho jayega. On the other hand, if I am giving a message and the person knows that I will not benefit from the purchase of the product in any form, then naturally I will be considered as unbiased and objective in my observation and therefore I will become more believable. Now this credibility issue is very significant in, in our advertisements. Now, since we have said that our sources are two kinds of sources, a formal source and an informal source. Now, let's see that the credibility issue, how does it relate to the informal source as well as the formal source? But first, let's take the informal source of communication because that is something which leads us into the concept of word of mouth. For example, friends, neighbors, family, relatives, all of them do communicate and they also communicate regarding the products and their influence, as we have already studied, is more stronger for a simple reason that it is assumed that they will not gain anything from the purchase or no purchase of the product. So one of the major factors, therefore, is uh, coming into position. Second is, that is why word of mouth, which is what we are talking about, relatives talking to you, neighbors, friends, people around, they are saying the same thing. Word of mouth becomes the strongest in terms of believability of a message. Now, Within the same context, we have opinion leaders. Uh, that's another format. And if you recall your marketing course, we have people who we call opinion leaders. They have specific characteristics. And it is again assumed that they do not personally benefit from this communication of this message. The only reason they are communicating is because they are knowledgeable, because they have used the product, they constantly read about the material, they are well aware of whatever is happening in that particular product category. So their words become significant. And that is why companies who are good marketers try to first locate the opinion leaders in the first instant and then try and market the product to them. If they accept the product because of its quality, obviously because opinion leaders are not, uh, you know, being... Uh, driven by incentive, but they are driven by the sake of knowledge, by the sake of their own interest, which is self-interest, their own ego is involved. So they tend to give the message a better content. Now, again, sochne ke liye, ke ek written message hai, jisko formal bol rahe, to wo to wohi leke jayega jo uske content mein hai. However, an opinion leader will try and improve the message for a very simple reason that he or she is knowledgeable and reading material on it. She is also reviewing all the relative uh, information that is regarding the product category. And then when this person uh, uh, is talking about the quality of service or the quality of the product, they become more believable. What do the companies therefore do? Once they have identified uh, the opinion leaders in a product category or uh, in a particular target market, then they tend to give them samples and let them evaluate them on their own. And nowadays, we see that this kind of, uh, you know, credibility is enhanced when you have chat rooms, blogs are used, and so on and so forth. So there are a number of methods by which we encourage the use of informal source but uske niche jo warning hai that the product must stand on its own feet. Which means that quality wise, the product must be, must have its own standard so that there is no miscommunication between the person who is trying to promote it, maybe informally promote it without really recognizing it and the product's use and its benefits itself. Now the question is, why do people involve themselves in word of mouth? And we must be aware also that word of mouth is not always positive. So we just don't assume 
that all word of mouth that is being said or given is positively uh, uh, associated with the product or brand. There could be reasons why the person is giving negative word of mouth. Now we have to look at the reasons or motivation for this word of mouth procedure. The first and the foremost is that the customers who or the consumer who is giving or providing this word of mouth becomes personally involved in that area. And if you recall a few lectures before, I had mentioned to you regarding a hospital and an accident where a child died because of a wrong injection. And now, since the person has become involved personally, the father became personally or the family became personally involved in that uh, debacle, unfortunate accident. And this involvement is regarding the product or the organization which is of concern or the object. Now, this was about the involvement with the product, but it can also be that the person is self-involved in it, in the sense that he has his own ego satisfaction. And it is very significant that when we said that people who are providing this word of mouth are not doing it for any monetary gain, but we should not ignore that they do get psychological benefits. Now, psychological benefits, for example, a person who is for a product and promoting that product uh, because he has used it and he is the opinion leader in this, the more people who approach him for information uh, and also ask him regarding the product and he provides them information, he gets a personal satisfaction. So the word of mouth that is being given now is based on a person's own personal satisfaction and to keep enhancing that, the person finds more information, tries to seem to be or show that he is an expert in that area and his interest will always be to be ahead of everybody in terms of knowledge in that particular area. Now, the third area is when people start this word of mouth is basically because they have some post-purchase dissonance. I've already discussed this post-purchase dissonance, but it's no big deal to again recapitulate it. And the idea is that if I have bought a product and obviously I have left other products which might have some different attributes. And now my worry is whether I've done the right job or not, or maybe the other product had some attributes that I wanted. So to cover this dichotomy or dissonance in my system, I start encouraging other people to buy the same product. The reason is that the more people buy, I become more uh, secure in the group form. Therefore, I start uh, a word of mouth by explaining to people why this product is good and I try and support the product itself. That becomes uh, a reason for uh, the, the word of mouth. The other area, the fourth area normally is when people try and become helpful. They become concerned about others. It can work both ways in the negative as well as the positive. For example, if somebody has bought a product and it is not good and he, the person becomes concerned that the people are going to make a mistake by buying this product, so he will start the negative word of mouth. On the other hand, if he believes that he has done a good job and he believes that what he has done, for example, uh, these bags are plastic. Ke. Now, there are two types of bag. One plastic bag is non-degradable. That is, if you put it in the ground, it will never be finished. But there are now new bags which have come into position which are biodegradable, which means that they do not harm, and they are plastic bags, they are not harmful to the environment. Now, if I have bought a product and I've used this particular, uh, no, sorry, biodegradable uh, pack or package or uh, uh, envelope or a lefafa, so what I will do is I'll start promoting that. My concern now for promoting that particular product is that I'm concerned about the environment I have concern about other people, so I will do it. Finally, the, one of the other reasons of word of mouth is, which is what the lowest of this in terms of impact, is incentives. Now, incentives can be, okay, if I'm an opinion leader, I know that I'll be receiving samples, or I could also be getting some commission, so I act as the word of mouth. 
Now here is, these were the aspects about the positive word of mouth. Let's also look at the negative word of mouth area. Now obviously negative word of mouth is if you are angry, you want to expose your feelings, you want to show your anger or frustration or whatever, so you indulge in word of mouth and you talk. We see that amongst ourselves also related to our friends, sometimes related to some people who we don't like, so we want to just throw out our feelings, so we do that. Uh, like I already told you, it could also be because of concern for others. Uh, like I said, a product which is dangerous, I might like to start telling everybody that don't use this product because this is dangerous because my concern is that no one else will be able Then finally we also have something we call extra version, which is again a, a kind of concern for other people. One is introversion, which is when you become involved with your own self. The other is extroversion, when you are more involved with other people. But extraversion is when you become involved in the larger society and you become concerned about the overall uh, society in which we are living. Now, like I said also, some people take pleasure in becoming a critic or a critic in any area. They start criticism, they critically evaluate things. So it gives them another kind of a self-enhancement or ego satisfaction when they criticize uh, whether they are products, whether they are events, whether they are people. So they do that kind of a thing. Finally, obviously, because of this attitude that you become critic, uh, you start criticizing. So people tend to search you out, tend to ask you. Uh, mostly they are asked to come on the televisions and sit and give a talk. And you will find that these kind of people are only doing it because they would like to be there. And therefore, they have generated all these negative kind of word of mouth, and they become popular among people in terms of this area. Now, credibility of a formal source. We have already now we are discussing the concept of the credibility of the informal source, and we have talked about word of mouth and friends and why do they do it as well as the opinion leaders. But now look at, and we also said that the informal source key credibility is much higher uh, from a credible credibility of a formal source. Now we will look at the formal source of information and then see uh, how this relates to the credibility aspect. Two types of organization I've already talked to you. One is a profit and a non-profit organization. Logic says if people know that this is a, a profit organization and the message is coming from a profit organization for whatever purpose, they will have this feeling in their minds that this is why because it will benefit them in monetary terms or in some other term. On the other hand, a non-profit organization, an NGO, like EDI, people will tend to believe it more because they assume that this uh, organization is not doing things for making a profit, but they are actually helping others. So natural inclination would be that the message would become more uh, uh, believable if it comes from a non-profit source. However, now the issue is ki jo dene wala hai ya jo source ya sender hai actual sender hai ab uski bari if the person is perceived to be a neutral person unbiased in approach and totally objective then it is more likely that his message will be believed more than people who are associated with the organization itself and people understand for example the sales people they will have less credibility than a commenter. Now, we can see that this normally happens in consumer reports, which is very common uh, in the Western world, where consumer reports are generated regarding products and categories, and they are more believable, even to the extent that people or guests or buyers are asked to report their uh, feelings or their uh, purchase experience on the blogs or on the website of the product, where they come and report, that suggests to the uh, receiver that there is more credibility in, if I say I've used this product and this is what I've found in it, then I will have more credibility than a salesperson who's saying you will get this benefit, okay? Now, again, that is why we are saying that publicity is more valuable. For example, in case of publicity, 
آپ غور کریں اگر کوئی نیوز پیپر یا کوئی میگزین کے ایڈیٹوریل میں کسی بھی پروڈکٹ کے حوالے سے کوئی ایڈیٹر بات کرتا ہے تو دیٹ سیمس ٹو بی مور بلیویبل دین این ایڈورٹیزمنٹ میسج وچ از بینگ پلیسڈ ان اے میڈیا اسی طرح سے ایف یو ریکال ایف یو ہیو سین دی ورلڈ کپ کرکٹ میچ اور ورلڈ کپ فٹ بال اور اینی کائنڈ آف اے باسکٹ بال اور اینی گیم ورلڈ ریلیٹڈ یو ول سی لاڈ آف پبلسٹی ٹیکنگ پلیس and not only publicity you will find that many organizations pay a huge amount of money to be able to publicize their products in a certain area by associating themselves with that kind of a, a what do you call event and this event provides them a publicity open publicity it does not give any message because there is just a name or a word and it is suggested that this project or this event has been sponsored by so and so and so Now, this sponsorship is actually providing a very huge amount of publicity to the, that company. And that is why we can see that sponsors try and buy uh, or actually pay for sponsorships of such events. Uh, that is what they do because now the reason why it is being done is that they are considered to be or such events are considered to be reflective of their own organizational attitude. Now, if that attitude is in people's minds that they are socially responsible, that yani means they are promoting positive activities in the market, they are promoting positive activities in the environment, they are, you know, cause-related activities where, for example, companies do that. They try and sponsor a cancer awareness campaign or uh, the... the TB awareness campaign and so and so forth. When, do, when they do these things, they are actually publicizing their social responsible behavior. And we should understand a little bit about the social responsible. I will not go into the detail. But social responsible behavior is what is not legally required of the company, but the company does something over and above its normal obligations to its shareholders and does something for its stakeholders, which also includes the overall community. For example, they normally, if you had seen, uh, they induce or they have, uh, they sponsor children's cleaning campaign of a park, of a, of a society, of a village or whatever. And by this behavior, what they are sending a message, they're actually saying that we are good people, we help others, so you help us to help others. Now, this becomes a very significant message uh, from the company to the, to the market, and it is all being done through publicizing themselves, not the product itself, but they are publicizing the organization's social behavior or social attitude or their social approach. Now, when they do this, obviously, we have to also recognize the fact that the people who are receivers are کتنا مانتے ہیں کہ دیز پیپل ہیو سین دس سیم تھنگ ہیپننگ ان دا پیسٹ اف اٹ از دا فرسٹ ٹائم اٹ مے ناٹ ہیو سچ اے سگنیفیکنٹ امپیکٹ بٹ اف دی ٹارگیٹ مارکیٹ اور دا کنزیومر اور دا جنرل پبلک سیز کہ اس کمپنی کا پاسٹ پرفارمنس بھی اسی ایریا میں سگنیفیکنٹ ہے تو دین دے اسٹارٹ بلیونگ اٹ دین دی کریڈیبلٹی آف دا فارمل سورس آف انفارمیشن انکریزز اینڈ ناؤ وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ بیسکلی companies which are made for profit and that is what their goal is that they tend to uh, show that though hum profit banate hain but we are also in terms of supporting uh, events and society ke actions which are uh, very positive to the overall development of the place that we live now knowing this we should also understand and i think i'm coming at the end of the lecture So I will talk about corporate branding and the concept of brand equity because these two things are linked. When we talk about people investing in social responsible behavior or profit organizations, uh, what do you call it, getting involved in social uh, responsible, actually building their organization's brand. So people are moving away from product branding to organizational branding and we will discuss this in the next lecture. Now, For the today, let's quickly recapitulate. We started with the model of communication and then we have undertaken a few uh, uh, areas of the process itself. 
and that is where we will be uh, finishing our uh, today's lecture. At the end, we need to remember that in the next class, we will be talking about brand equity as well as organizational or corporate branding. Okay, thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.